47 seconds in, Jan Sove with a, a shot from the point. Not sure if Nicola Riepel saw the shot as his reaction to the goal was was a bit suspect. Uh, there was a crowd in front of him, so I, likely he was screened on the play. Well, uh, and it, it sort of uh, set the, the tenor for the hockey game. Uh, the Wildcats uh, had trouble in the first period getting things together. The Sea Dogs certainly controlled the action. Yeah, with that goal, it really put the Wildcats, it set them back on their heels, and they really, did, excuse me, didn't generate any any offense in that uh, first period. Only four shots on goal. And what it was for the Sea Dogs is they didn't surrender a difficult shot. Yeah, and, and uh, surprisingly, the Sea Dogs uh, only scored one goal because they had uh, a number of great opportunities to take the lead in the hockey game extended, but they did that. They got up 2 nothing on a gift goal, really, in the second period. Yeah, it was, uh, again, it was a gift goal. Kirkpatrick, the recipient of the goal, was an unassisted goal. Uh, defensive breakdown in the Moncton zone. The defensemen, they just got farther and farther apart, and there was a bad pass, and the uh, shot went on Rio. Rio made the save, but the rebound came out to Kirkpatrick, and it went off the shin pad and across the goal line for the second goal for the Sea Dogs. So uh, when you're, when you're, the hockey gods sometimes favor you, and in this case, they did to the Sea Dogs. And it was a shorthanded goal to boot, but then the Wildcats uh, certainly uh, played on the string on the power play and finally capitalized with about five seconds left uh, with the man advantage. Well, it was a great shift by the Wildcats. They were, they were scored upon, but they came out, generated some offense, pushed the puck down low, and Rivik uh, caught uh, Cousineau moving and just stuffed it in on the short side. So we had uh, a 2-1 to -one lead for the Sea Dogs going into the third period, but the Wildcats came out uh, in the second, they outshot the Sea Dogs. Then in period number three, they dominated the Sea Dogs. Yeah, and, and they scored the lone goal. They could have easily had a couple of more. There was chances where they had the two-man advantage, and goaltender Cousineau really came up big and, and stoned the Wildcats. But the Wildcats, again, were very persistent, and I think the happiest player on the ice on that uh, in the third period was Cole McMillan. He tied the game with the second of the postseason. And what, what impressed me was the last five minutes of the third period because both goaltenders were outstanding. Cousineau made a save that uh, brought oohs and ahs from the 6,800 here. And then down at the other end, Riefel did the same thing. Uh, it, it sort of bounced off his back when it appeared to be going into the net. Yeah, it, as uh, our color commentator Derek Duarte said, it went off the number nine on the 29 on his back. So if the jersey had been a little bit lower, that would have been a short goal for St. John, but uh, the, they, they were good to hang on at that state. The cuts on goal, I think, in the third period, indicative of the play. For sure, the the Wildcats, 18-7 uh, to 7 were the shot totals, and I would suspect, I haven't had a chance to look at the summary, but I would suspect the majority of those shots were uh, dangerous shots. Yeah, it was, a, it was a great performance, but then late in the period, when it appeared that the Wildcats uh, had dominated totally, the Sea Dogs came back, and uh, they almost got the game-winning goal in regulation time, except for another uh, terrific save by Riepel. Well, Riepel re really stood strong in that uh, last few minutes of the third period, and this allowed the team to go to overtime. And then we go to overtime, and it's, it's always exciting when, when you get into uh, extra time in the playoffs, and particularly in a final series. The Wildcats uh, controlling uh, the overtime period to a large extent, but again, uh, the Sea Dogs came back, and, and uh, a great scoring play uh, by Sobe and Peterson. They combined. Uh, describe the, the goal for us. Well, Sove came in and he skated down the right wing. He cut in towards the net, let a shot go. Rio kicked it out, but Peterson picked up that rebound and he scored to the far side, uh, just grazing the posts and across the goal line. And of course, that meant that we had an even series. Now we're down to a situation where uh, we're the best two of three and the St. John Sea Dogs have home ice advantage. Yeah, the Wildcats back to the drawing board on this one. It's a heartbreaking loss. They don't have time to uh, regroup on this game. Uh, they, less than 24 hours, they're back in St. John, and less than 24 hours from now, likely a team will be up 3-2. to two. Yeah, Some team will be uh, leaving Harbor Station tomorrow with a chance to win the President's Cup on Monday night at the Coliseum. Well, for the Wildcat fans here that uh, left here heartbroken, they hope that it's their opportunity on on Monday night. I'm sure they do. It uh, was certainly dramatic the way it finished tonight, and uh, as overtime always is. But uh, Saturday night at Harbor Station, and then next Monday night back here at the Coliseum, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But uh, 
The St. John Sea Dogs, after being down two, have come back to win two. Yeah, full marks to the Sea Dogs. They were, they were a team uh, that they were number one in the league, and there was a reason why. Uh, the first two games, we thought that that wasn't the real Sea Dog team, and maybe that we might have been a little bit too confident with the uh, the five one victory and then the nine three victory, but uh, the Wildcats have uh, struck ground, struck reality very quickly. They have indeed. So uh, the final score in overtime is three two. The St. John Sea Dogs defeating the Moncton Wildcats. The series even at two. And uh, on Saturday night, back at Harbor Station for Game Five, Game Six will be here at the Coliseum on Monday night at seven o'clock. Uh, we complained about uh, not having exciting hockey in the first couple of games. Boy, that complaint went out the window tonight with the drama that we had here at the Coliseum. In fact, uh, we had uh, a fair-sized piece of drama uh, in St. John on uh, Tuesday night as well when the Wildcats came back and appeared uh, like they were uh, going to tie the game. But tonight, it was the Sea Dogs prevailing with the overtime victory, and the series is tied at two. We'll have all of the action of tomorrow night's game on Wildcats TV after the encounter at Harper Station.